listening to the Author Inside You podcast, a weekly podcast designed to motivate you to finish writing a book, choose a publisher, and have your work build an audience. Keep listening if you're looking to get propelled into the next chapter of your life. And now, it's the Author Inside You podcast with your host, Leah and Matt Rafferty. Hello, and welcome to the Author Inside You podcast. I'm Matt Rafferty. And I'm Leah Rafferty. Joining us today is Preston Kleffenstein, author of The Jevedon Project. Preston's goal is to inspire a new generation of storytellers and creators who can change our culture for the better. He grew up in Illinois and is now married, father of two, living in South Dakota. Preston, thanks for joining us today. Welcome. Hi, Matt. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, Preston, before we get on your journey of being an author, I have to ask you about living in South Dakota without any state tax. It's nirvana, (laughs) I tell you. I mean, that's a Uh, nice nice to have. Yeah, it's a great place to live. Great. Well, Preston, tell us about the Jevedon Project. Certainly. Well, uh, what the Jevedon Project is, I describe it as a near future science fiction techno thriller. It also kind of bridges with the horror genre, although for a while I was embarrassed about using that particular word because it is, uh, I kind of stayed away from it just because it's a lot less gratuitous than a lot of works I've seen in that genre. But the basic plot of the book follows a zoologist uh, by the name of Dr. Philip Castor, who goes on a conservation project in Indonesia for an endangered tiger species. And while he's there, um, he encounters a series of mysterious animal attacks that are the work of an unknown big cat of some sort that is thought to be a tiger at first, but displays patterns of behavior that are completely unrelated to any known species of tiger or even animal. And eventually it emerges that this animal may not be as natural as it seems. Hmm, interesting. It does sound like an interesting story, that's for sure. When you when you write a book like this, did you come up with a, an outline so that you knew where the story was going? Or do you just sit down and write and then continue writing and the story kind of grows on its own? I kind of, I'm one of those uh, people, I like structure a lot. So I started out with like a chapter by chapter outline, which worked fairly well. Uh, Basically, once I got that basic sequence of events down, uh, that's when I just kind of let the narrative process take over. Oh, okay. And did that take long to come up with the chapter by chapter? Uh, That took mm, just about a month or two, I think. And then from there, it took me about a year and a half to write the actual book. Wow. And while you were writing, did the plot change or did you say, ah, oh, no, this isn't the way I want it to go? Or did, was it smooth sailing? The basic plot, I think, remained largely the same, um, except for a few retroactive revisions where I found plot holes when I got the first draft finished. You had the book released uh, with a different title earlier, and now you're re-releasing it. Is that right? Initially, I had released the title, um, the book under the title Harvest of Prey. And then I wound, initially, I had tried uh, going through traditional publishing channels. Um, I sent out queries to about 30 literary agents before. At that time, you have to understand, I was a complete newbie to the publishing <laughs> industry. So I was completely unprepared for just how long and arduous the query process can be. So... I kind of gave up after 30. In retrospect, I should have tried at least 80 Mm -hmm. uh, queries and decided to just self-publish through CreateSpace, just kind of thinking, okay, I'll just try monetizing this a little bit and move on to my next project. I naively thought once I just released it on CreateSpace with print-on-demand, it would just immediately start generating revenue, which... (laughs) Yeah, any experienced self-published author will tell you exactly the opposite. But <laughs> yeah. at this time, I knew practically nothing. Right. You, so, need to, you need to find an audience first, right? Yeah. So what I wound up doing, I actually found out about one last agent uh, who, seen, who, might, who it looked like might be interested in the manuscript. So I sent in a query to the Steve Loby 
agency. Uh, they're a pretty well-known firm for Christian speculative fiction, which is kind of the genre I write in. So okay. I sent a query to Steve, and he responded to me, was interested in seeing the rest of the manuscript, though we did recommend a few revisions. Uh, the original uh, was about 150,000 words, most of it overwritten dialogue and things like that. So it had to be scaled down before it was kind of that met the standards for publishing. So I went through and did those revisions, uh, got it down to 137,000 words, which is where it's, it still is. And I sent that into him and he expressed interest in it, uh, thought I had a good story and everything, but he had some follow-up questions uh, regarding the fact I had self-published it through CreateSpace before I contacted him. Mm -hmm. uh, technically, that's not a problem. Um, there have been cases in the past where self-published books have been republished through traditional means. Um, like one example, I believe, was The Martian by Andy Weir. Um, but in my case, I had self-published without knowing anything about the marketing promotion side of things so i wound up i had wound up inadvertently saddling myself with some very weak sales figures and the thing is any previous sales figures have to be reported to a traditional publisher if if you're seeking a contract okay. with them and a lot of them they only take on one first time author per year so the competition for that slot can be extremely fierce wow. yeah, yeah, so, so. yeah yeah so unfortunately he had to make a tough call and declined to represent me just because the fact that i had those very weak figures would put me kind of at the bottom of the selection process and he didn't want to put either one of us in the position of taking me on and then seeing me fail for non-writing related mm -hmm. reasons sure yeah, so after that setback, I kind of took a step back, reconsidered things, and kind of took it. I decided to take advantage of the fact that I had, I had the benefit of feedback from Steve and sure. the revisions I had already done. So I decided to do a re-release under a new title and with the revised manuscript. So the result of that was the Jevadon project. Hmm. Well, that's a great learning process, it seems. Like oh yeah, kind of a crash course, and <laughs> would have preferred to have learned it in a slightly different sure. way. But ultimately, I think it's been very beneficial. Well, thank you for sharing that with our audience because our audience members are new people who don't know how to navigate the system. So thank you. You wrote thirty query letters, and then you've decided to put it back on Create Space again. Are you? Is that correct? Back on Create Space. Well, I, I did the 30 or so inquiries before I had even heard of Create Space. Then once I had done those, I was kind of getting, I had gotten exhausted by the process because, and like I said, I didn't know very much about it. So I, at that point, I had, in a sense, kind of given up and thought I would move on to my next project and just put it on Create Space without much thought going into it. Just, like I said, naively thinking I could monitor ties it that way and then after that i found out about the steve Loby agency mm -hmm. thought that sounded like another potential opportunity to still possibly do traditional publishing and so that's when i contacted them with kind of the result that since i would rushed ahead with create space i wound up kind of self-sabotaging at that point mm -hmm. so how has your experience been with create space and and putting it back up for the second time well, at this time, uh, the book is available through pre-order uh, with Kindle Direct Publishing. Uh, the scheduled launch date is March 3rd, 2018. So what I'm actually doing this time, um, I retired, I've retired. retired the previous version from Create Space, and right now I'm still planning to do the paperback version through Create Space. But what I've done in addition to that is I've also... I've purchased my own ISBN number, so oh, okay. I can also publish through Ingram Spark. Um, CreateSpace is a great platform, but one of the main disadvantages is that they'll provide you your own I an ISBN number free of charge if you choose to just use theirs instead of your own. But the problem is 
Uh, when it comes to actual retailers that sell books, a lot of them won't purchase from CreateSpace because they don't actually a- allow returns. So then the merchant mm-hmm. would just be stuck with that if one of the buyers decided they didn't like the book and wanted to bring it back. So I went ahead and did Ingram Spark, um, and then I'm also doing Create Space, so I can kind of get that distribution through Amazon, which is what Create Space is the best for, and then using Ingram Spark for the act, for the retail side of things because they actually do allow returns. So Ingram Spark, you you sent them the book, and then they print it, they send it to you, or send it to the retailer, and then it is sold that way. Uh, correct. Uh, both. Uh, Create Space and Ingram Spark are print on demand services. So it means just whenever whenever anyone wants to buy the book, they just once they purchase it, it automatically prints a copy for them that's delivered right then and there as opposed to pre printing a big batch of books and trying to sell them that way. And uh, uh, one uh, interesting trivia Create Space actually uses Ingram Spark for their expanded distribution option it's just that there's that drawback of the fact that they don't allow the return so it's a better deal um it costs um the standard charge is about 49 dollars to use ingram spark if you go with them outside of create space but in this case i think um, there's the added benefit then of just having that return Mm -hmm. Um, option for retailers who choose to participate. Sure, if it can get you into more retailers. How are you going about finding retailers? Well, that process uh, has not, is something I'm planning to get started on in force following the release. Uh, Right now, I'm uh, doing my blog tour uh, through social media. Um, I'm focusing right now on making connections with other authors who write in my genre. Uh, There's actually a pretty big developing market um, right now for Christian speculative fiction. Um, I'm part of a, several author groups on Facebook that do things in this genre. Uh, primary one is Realm Makers Consortium. Uh, they actually have an annual writers conference. Um, th- last year was in, I believe, Nevada, uh, Las Vegas, actually. This year it's going to be in St. Lewis, Missouri. So I've so I've uh, become a member there, and it's been a great opportunity to network, find others who are um, writing similar types of fiction, kind of get that kind of trade ideas, mm-hmm. and also reviews of each other's books. So sure. it's great. So it's been a great way to get some added exposure for me. Yeah, it's it's always great to hang out with people with the same interest. You know, you learn a lot. Can you explain the blog tour, please? How it basically works is in the the week before and the week after the release date, like kind of leading up to and then uh, kind of afterwards with continuing promotion, um, I contacted several other fellow authors who have blogs and websites of their own. And what they'll do is they'll host a guest post or a piece of content from me on a particular day for kind of promoting the book. Uh, for example, I have a series of short stories that serve as prequels to the novel. Um, I've made them available to su- for subscribers to my mailing list okay. for free. Uh, what I'm doing with this blog tour is I'll actually uh, send them to participants so they can post them in full on their website that way. And then in addition to that, I have some participants who are hosting get topical guest posts from me while I'll, where I'll write on a topic or a theme I explore in the book and how it relates to other themes out there. And then in addition, I have others who are doing reviews of the book on their website. Wow, that seems like a great experience and great exposure at the same time. And you're also meeting new people. This sounds like a wonderful yeah. journey. That's great. <laughs> Was it hard finding blogs to to accept your offer? It actually, well, I actually was part of the groups for a while. So at that point, I kind of had known some of the people beforehand, just kind of from commenting on each other's blogs. So yeah, it actually proved to be pretty smooth sailing. I found a lot of people who were excited about 
the book and thought it looked very interesting and kind of had written similar books themselves and were anxious to kind of help get this sort of story promoted. Did you have enough time in advance to write the blog posts or were you really busy the last two weeks <laughs> right now writing a lot of posts? Um, I actually got um, all of them finished earlier uh, this month. Uh, that I will uh, confess that part was a bit of a crunch. Um, I had kind of planned out the blog tour, or at least tried to, uh, back in j back in January, even a little bit earlier. But yeah, kind of with the best laid plans and <laughs> all the yeah, and with the holidays and everything, uh, time still can kind of be a bit of a factor. But but yeah, ultimately, I've got pretty much all the material put together at this point. So it's just kind of, it actually the first. Uh, uh, the first um, participant actually did their post today, so so it's just kind of a matter of seeing where it goes from here. Great. Congratulations. Yes. Yeah, thank you. One other thing I've actually started doing is I participate in a, another uh, in a page on Facebook called H. Halverstadt Books. Uh, they actually provide mm -hmm. uh, reviews to new um, self-published authors in the Christian speculative fiction genre who are just getting started. Um, I've had the opportunity to review several of them as a member of that page, so that's also been a very good resource for connecting with other writers. Oh, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Well, I saw on your webpage you have um, a trailer video for your book. So yep. uh, tell me about how did you do that? How did that come about? Uh, yeah, that one I... I put together uh, through an, uh, through Adobe Spark. Um, it's kind of a neat online, free online service that kind of walks you through the process of putting together a video presentation for people who have absolutely no experience, like <laughs> myself, putting together right. video uh, yeah, presentations. I, so. I saw that credit at the end for Adobe Spark. I was I was wondering what that was, but now I know it. So it's a free service you can use online. Yep. And um, yeah, and they I also uh, and they provide uh, they link you to some online libraries of free stock images like a uh, Pixabay, Unsplash. Um, I think they're can't quite remember. There may have been one other website I got them from. I can't remember it right at the moment. So so I used that, and then on YouTube I actually checked out a looked at a library they have of royalty free music that just anyone can use and then i use that as the background yeah that's great I, great resources i have seen yeah. that music on there but i've never i've never clicked on and listened to any of those but i guess i should check that out uh yeah i'd recommend it for anyone who ne needs uh, very cost effective <laughs> yes. uh background music yeah right well, those are two good points right there yeah. just for the marketing <laughs> right it yeah. seems like a lot of people have trouble with the marketing so um that's great can I ask you about your cover? I really like your cover. Did you design it or did you outsource it? Well, yes and and yes to both questions <laughs> in a sense. Um, I did that through another free online service. Um, it's called Canva.com. Mm -hmm. uh, it's basically um, it basically provides templates for book covers, social media posts, and a variety of other like posters, uh, graphic. It's kind of a graphic design tool for beginners. Uh, what I did was I went on there. They also have their own uh, library of images that are available either as stock images for free or images for sale. Um, I wound up uh, purchasing the main image for just a dollar. Uh, it was a drawing. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was a drawing of a, um, well, a lion kind of with black blackish fur or maybe a panther i'm not quite sure so what i did was i took that and then i zoomed it in until it just focused on the eye that's the centerpiece of the cover and then from there i inserted text and then downloaded it as a jpeg file yeah that's great that i mean you zoomed in far i imagine but but it still doesn't look pixelated or it doesn't look distorted at all but it, it's cool that it looks like a cat's eye Thank you. Yeah. So where can our audience get in touch with you? I have a website at akpreston.com. Um, my Through the website, you can also access my blog at empyreanvoyager.wordpress.com. 
dot com. Uh, that's where I'm actually the most active in terms of my online writing. It may be simpler to go to akpreston.com than just follow the blog link, which will take you directly there. <laughs> right. Well, I can put I can put links to both of those in the show notes. And then what about purchasing your book? You said Amazon? Uh, yeah, it's available on Amazon right now for pre-order. Um, Kindle version will be uh, $2.99. And then the paperback version, um, it's I'm planning, a, once I get it finalized with CreateSpace, I, that should be available for around $11 or so. What advice do you have for our audience members? Well, for those who are getting started out for the first time um, as a self-published author, I would say embrace your identity as an independent author from the very beginning. Um, my big problem starting out was I, ironically, for a science fiction author, my view of the publishing industry was several decades out of date. Um, there's The market is changing in ways that we couldn't foresee uh, just 10 years ago, uh, self-publishing is coming to the forefront with things like print-on-demand, um, e-books, that type of thing. Um, I pr Another piece of advice I'd give for people who are just starting out in this new market is connect, connect, connect. Mm -hmm. um, one of the most valuable resources you'll have are those relationships with other authors in your field. Um, you're ultimately going to need someone who can show help you navigate this industry and kind of the best way to do that is to learn from those who've gone before right and then to offer help for those who are coming up oh yeah right? definitely yep. uh, the other in addition to connect, connect 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 i would also say serve 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 one of the best ways i've had of getting in touch with fellow authors has been through things like providing book reviews oh excellent idea mm -hmm. very good well, thanks, Preston, for joining us today on the Author Inside You podcast. It's been great talking to you and, and picking your brain about uh, publishing your book. Thank you. It's been a delight to be here. Thank you for listening to the Author Inside You podcast. We've been getting some inquiries about people who want to start their own podcast. If you're thinking about starting a podcast, head on over to theauthorinsideyou.com and click on the link, How to Podcast. It's a link to my friend Dave Jackson's course on everything you need to know about getting started with podcasting. Until next time. Right on. Thank you for listening to the Author Inside You podcast with your host, Leah and Matt Rafferty.